This is Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 22, Jesus said to all who would follow him, you, you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Intolerance and persecution is something that Christians have dealt with for centuries. Believers were prepared for it by Jesus and the apostles. And it is something that reared its evil head in the first few years of Christian history and has continued for 2,000 years. What is truly eye-opening is how the rejection of the Christian faith is so open in our day and how quickly rejecting Jesus and his teachings spread throughout our nation. Examples of this hatred of all things Christian are easy to cite, including the recent comments Senator Dianne Feinstein made to Notre Dame law professor Amy Barrett, who was nominated by President Trump to the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. Senator Feinstein told her, I think whatever a religion is, it has its own dogma. And I think in your case, Professor, when you read your speeches, the conclusion one draws is that the dogma lives loudly within you and that's of concern when you come to the big issues that large numbers of people have fought for years in this country. It would seem obvious that to Senator Feinstein, the big issues are related to undermining social mores and transforming our country into a moral cesspool. It would seem obvious that Feinstein thinks a progressive atheist is a better candidate for judgeship than someone who has a moral base founded on biblical principles. This hatred has spread to every area of a Christian's moral beliefs and life. It infects everything in our society. At one time, Christian principles and faith was honored and recognized positively, but not anymore. When our second lady, Karen Pence, decided to return to work as a part-time teacher, you would think that every liberal and progressive woman would use her as an example as, of, a, of a strong and talented woman using her talents to help others. If you think that, you're wrong. Karen committed the unpardonable sin by taking a job to teach at a Christian school. It seems that many belonging to vocal fringe groups are not pleased with the school's parent agreement that calls parents to be imitators of Christ by following biblical standards of conduct, which includes opposition to LGBT stand on sexuality and same-sex marriage. For this breach of conforming to accepted progressive dogma and the normalization of sinful behavior, Karen is regarded as a poor example of a modern woman and has been attacked for her sincerely held religious beliefs. This is common today, and it seems that almost every day a new attack on the Christian faith is made, which brings me to one of the most outrageous and blatant attacks that we have recently been witness to. This last weekend, the March for Life was held once again in Washington, D.C. As one could expect, the march was not covered thoroughly by the press because it would seem the idea of protecting the unborn is not on the agenda of many politicians, certain news agencies or the Me Too movement, a so-called movement that claims to care about women while simultaneously supporting the slaughter of baby girls in their mother's wombs. It seems that there are other things that the press finds interesting and newsworthy, and it did not take long for something to happen that they could jump onto in order to condemn those who are part of what they call the right. This they did when they began to attack a group of Kentucky high school students that had joined in the March for Life. It would be ludicrous to deny that the attack on the Covington, Kentucky Catholic High School students was anything but an open and hostile expression of a hatred for the Christian belief of the sanctity of life, as well as a blatant and constant expression of hatred for President Trump. Any who would attempt to make it anything other than these two basic things is simply blind. The black Hebrew Israelites and the Native American who got involved became simply useful pawns in the continuous narrative of hatred for the president, as well as all things conservative or Christian. I watched the interview of Nick Sandman, the 16-year-old boy who has been trashed by the national press, as well as the ignorant bloggers who need to get a life. If anyone should be ashamed, it should be the black Hebrew Israelites who screamed public obscenities at the miners and the tribal member Nathan Phillips, whose interview with CNN was riddled with inconsistencies, not to mention nonsense. He stated that he felt that the adult members of the hate group Black Hebrew Israelites were the prey 
and a group of 16-year-old high school students were the beasts who were going to attack them. When you see him standing in front of young Mr. Sandman, it simply makes no sense to me that a man in his 60s would take it upon himself to attempt to intimidate a group of schoolboys. The false narrative was carried by various news agencies and blogged by any number of ignorant writers. It resulted in threats of violence to the students and threats to the school itself. And it was all completely wrong and taken out of context. Where's the outrage over this? The so-called progressives are strangely silent because the narrative fits their agenda, even if it is completely unjust and a fabrication. I say all of this to simply make it clear that it's beyond time that believers openly express their displeasure of the one-sided narratives that have become commonplace in American society. It is time to make it clear that we will not allow our faith and values to be trashed daily by antichrist journalists and hate groups. I'm not advocating violence, but I am encouraging believers to speak out when nonsense is spewed and to be ready to give a defense of the Christian faith. I also would encourage believers to go to a church that teaches God's word and to spend personal time in reading and studying your Bibles so that you can be prepared to answer the questions that are being asked concerning our faith and our lifestyle choices. I would also encourage all believers to live as witnesses for Jesus because when we don't, it simply undermines the testimony of scripture concerning the life of a follower of Christ. The ultimate answer is not political in and of itself. We can't elect righteousness and there isn't a politician who will be the answer to the moral problems and the evil that has become normal for us in America. Frankly, hearing Nancy Pelosi lecture Americans about morality is an insult to any truly moral American. Her feigned concern for children at our southern border is revealed to be bogus by her lack of concern for children in their mother's womb, and I won't listen to her lectures. She has absolutely no moral authority to lecture anyone on faith and life. We believers simply need to be aware of the times and seasons we're living in, and we need to stop wanting to be liked by the world. We are to be salt and light, and it is my encouragement to us, to us, to all of us today, be aware of the need of the moment we live in. And it's important for us to not only talk about our faith, but to live it out. We need to be able to explain and defend it. If your church doesn't help you to know the essentials of the Christian faith, maybe it's time to find one that does. This is Pastor Dave Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley, California.